you're new to vacation rental hosting or you're looking for ways to optimize the management of your property, smart home features shouldn't be overlooked. Long gone are the days of basic door locks, standard Wi-Fi routers, and wondering if your guests are running up that AC bill. What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie, and we've spent the last few years trying out various smart home equipment at different price points, and we're gonna be sharing our favorites with you today. But keep in mind, at a short-term rental, there is also such a thing as too much tech. So we'll also be discussing a popular item that might not be so user-friendly. And items that you should avoid putting in your short-term rental because you risk getting booted off the Airbnb platform. Shut it down, shut it all down. First item on our STR smart home list is a Wi-Fi thermostat. Wi-Fi thermostats allow us to monitor the AC unit and the temperature in the house remotely. We can adjust set points or cool down a house in advance of a guest arrival. We can also look at the history to help troubleshoot any issues. And we can also see set points and make sure guests are setting the units at a reasonable level. We're in the Palm Springs area and the high today is 116 degrees. So the thermal load on these units is about as extreme as it can get. Yeah, with that, it's not unlikely that a house just can't keep up to super low set points and maybe only hold 75 degrees or so during the day till the sun goes down and it starts catching up again. Over the past week, we've had, no joke, six people get to the house, see the temperature, and then proceed to turn it all the way down to 60 degrees, six zero. We've had to politely educate in these situations and explain to guests that turning the set point that low does not make the unit work any faster. In fact, it just makes the unit continue to work to a point where if it ever does reach that set point, it would freeze over and then break and then you'd have no AC. Is this air conditioner even working? <laughs> Because it is so common for a guest to come in and turn the AC down to a dangerously low level, our favorite thermostat is one that allows us to set reasonable limits for both heating and cooling. Our go-to is the Emerson Sensi units, and we'll link that and all the other smart home tech we're going to talk about today in the video description below. Or you can go to arrivals.com slash work smarter, not harder. Our second favorite is the Nest thermostat, and there are a couple different models, and you definitely get what you pay for the cheaper unit doesn't have the ability to set limits. The Nest does kind of have that cool factor. It is more modern looking than the Sensi. We do regularly have to talk guests through how to operate it. It's less intuitive figuring out how to adjust the temperature themselves. So if you're going to use the Nest, especially the cheap version, make sure you check over all the settings after guests leave. Make sure they didn't change something they weren't supposed to. Our next must-have item is a smart lock for your front door. Smart locks are a convenient solution for any home. They allow you to remotely lock and unlock the door, set different user codes and rules for who can access the house, and then you can also monitor the history. We like that we can set unique codes for different members of our team. So we have our own codes, our house cleaners have their own codes, inspectors, and then guests. There are several good smart locks in the market, but we like to try and streamline our operation and not use tons of different brands. So we've kind of centralized on the quick set halo models. More brands means more apps to manage and less efficiency, but we've been using the quick set for years and and we really like it. There was a period of time a couple years ago where we were seeing short battery life and Quickset has done a good job updating the firmware of these locks and those issues haven't come up since then. Battery quality that you put into the locks does matter though and we've linked our favorites on the smart home list. Our second favorite lock is very popular in the short-term rental world. It's a Schlage Encode. We like this lock a lot. It works well but because it's so popular it's often really hard to get or really expensive so we usually pass it by. Or we'll see which one has the best price when we're looking to buy it. Door locks and a camera and a noise monitor are three things that we provide for free for our clients as part of our management agreement, so we buy a lot of them. On the subject of locks, we also like to use keypad locks on supply closets where we keep spares in the house. They're relatively inexpensive. We just ordered one for a client today for a new property, and I think it was less than $50, so that beats having to have a set of keys around and then put them in a lockbox and way easier. Where's my keys? Where are my Next up is the smart garage system from MyQ. If you have a newer garage door, then it's probably already built in. But if not, this is a worthwhile $30 investment. We can't count the number of times we've helped out guests who might be having issues with a keypad. Or sometimes they just forget to close the garage door when they leave. We get an alert and then we close it remotely. Or they lock themselves inside the garage. We've had that before. We've We're had to help them out that Standalone garage and people somehow got 
trapped inside. A couple of weeks ago on Prime Day, we discovered a new product from MyQ with features that we've been searching for for years. MyQ came out with a smart video keypad. It works with Chamberlain, LiftMaster, and Craftsman doors right now, and I think they're growing that list of compatible openers. The best part is that you can set and change different codes remotely, just like you can for a smart door lock. It's the garage keypad of my dreams. All my wildest dreams came true. This is huge. Previously, you had to go to a property, push the learn button on the motor and the keypad, go through this process with the keypad to change a code. Doing this remotely and also being able to monitor and turn on and off codes at different times. This Set is huge. Set different codes for different people. It's yeah. Amazing. The video function is nice to have. We understand there's a subscription service for that. There's a 30 day free trial when you buy the keypad. We'll see how that goes and we've linked this keypad in the description below. I noticed you sent me a bunch of check-in instructions. It looked nice, but I didn't have any time to read it. So can you tell me how to get in your garage? The next two items are, like I mentioned before, things that we provide for free as part of our management agreement, but they're also two things that you need to make sure you're disclosing on your listing if you're using them at your property. These are an external camera and a noise monitor. We like to have one exterior camera that overlooks the driveway. And yes, these are for security, but really they're for the operations of our business. So we want to make sure we know when the guest has left, if the cleaners have arrived and when, if our inspector is there to check the house, making sure that everything is operating on time and according to schedule. This isn't to spy on our guests. And if you do, it's going to be way more stress on you than you care to deal with. And not to mention this creepy for the guests. We've had some disclosure scares in the past with both with cameras and noise monitors. We had them disclosed on our listing, but we didn't disclose them properly. Yes, that's a thing. We got some feedback from Airbnb on how they'd like cameras to be disclosed, and this is what we write now. So we say we have one actively recording camera that overlooks the driveway. It records audio and video. Actively and the recording audio and video were the things that we had been tripped up on in the past. Make sure to check your state laws. Some states don't allow audio recording. That might be a thing you have to keep in mind. There is a huge range of price points for security cameras. You can spend a lot of money on them, but our favorite for the past few years, our go-to is actually a very inexpensive one called Wise. These are cheap and they also have the features we need. You get notified of motion alerts, which you can review. And then they also record continuously and you can go back and review that footage should you need to look at something specific. We also can't believe how long they've all lasted, especially for their price. Extreme heat in the desert, salty air at the beach, they've seen it all. Just make sure that you're mounting it over some sort of overhang so that they're at least partially protected from the elements. But the recent models do have good water resistance ratings. For noise monitors, our go-to is the Minute brand. We've tried Noise Aware in the past. We really like that the Minute also senses motion. It's nice to be able to correlate sound levels to motion, and then you can kind of draw a conclusion if it's your guests making that noise, or maybe the neighbors are having a really loud party if there's no motion, but there's noise. Or mowing their lawn. Escape or something like that. I'm sorry, am I being too loud? If you aren't familiar with a noise monitor, they're basically like a smoke alarm for noise. So they measure noise decibel levels, and if those decibel levels reach and exceed a certain threshold, then we get a notification and we can take action if needed. We only mount these on the exterior of the house, not the inside. Our goal here is to keep the peace with the neighbors, not to monitor noise levels inside the house. You will need to disclose a noise monitor in the same place that you disclose a camera on Airbnb. And what we write is there is a smart home monitor on the back patio, which actively monitors noise decibels. It does not record audio or video. Next up is your Wi-Fi router. And if you're using the router that was provided by your service provider, listen closely to this section. If your router is from your ISP, the one you're paying a little monthly service fee for, it's most likely garbage, I'm sorry. And if you're having recurring connectivity issues, a router is most likely to blame, not the underlying service from your provider. So instead of paying that monthly fee, return it, tell them you're getting your own router instead, and then use one of these options. Our favorite is the Orbi router from Netgear. This is a mesh Wi-Fi system where you have a central router, and then you can also place satellite units around the house to extend the coverage if it's a big house or if you want to extend to the other side of the house or outdoors, they work really great for that. You can also remotely monitor what devices are on your network. You can restart the router remotely and you can run a remote speed test to see if there are any issues. Brand new, 
These routers are quite expensive, but we often shop Amazon warehouse deals or eBay and come up with open box items that are priced really well. And you also can consider the fact that you're not paying that monthly service fee for the rented router anymore. So that's going to offset it a bit as well. If you're looking to build your email list and focus more on direct bookings, you may want to consider this router called StayFi. We'll link it in the description below. Next on our list is a smart TV. When choosing a TV for a short term rental, we like to keep the guests top of mind and make sure their user experience is as easy and simple as possible. Having multiple remotes or a complicated process to use a cable box can lead to frustration pretty quickly with the guests. And can potentially take up a lot of your time if you're spending it on the phone trying to teach them how to use the TV. And remember that what is intuitive for you may not be intuitive for everyone. We always choose TVs that have the built in Roku interface. And this is different than adding a Roku stick to a TV. We like to stick with the units where it's built in part of the TV one remote to control the whole thing. You can find Roku TVs from brands like Hisense and TCL. And within those brands, there's a wide range of price points and sizes and all that stuff. We typically buy them from Walmart or Best Buy. We used to see them more at Costco and Amazon, but it's becoming less of a thing these days for some reason. One commonly overlooked smart home feature for your short-term rental is lighting. This could be as simple as installing dust to dawn bulbs in your entryway or more advanced Wi-Fi switches. It's nice enough to have guests arrive to a completely dark house. And then if you do do the Wi-Fi switch, one of the perks is if you have loud guests, for example, and they're not responding to you when you try and tell them to quiet down because you got an alert from your noise monitor, you can turn the lights off, the backyard lights, for example, and that will usually get their attention. And last but not least for today, there is one item that we would recommend not adding to your short-term rental, and that is a smart hub with listening capability. Anything that you can say, Alexa, do this, or Google, do that, should be avoided in your short-term rental. I understand that it might seem like a nice amenity that guests would use playing music or asking what the weather is or whatever, but there are people that are going to view this as an invasion of privacy. And if it's undisclosed, it could actually be considered a security violation, which could get you booted from the platform. Yep, we've heard of that happening. Let us know in the comments if you're using one of the items we mentioned here today. Or if you have a different item that we didn't mention, let us know about it. We'd love to check it out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.